as a question. Sacred symbols, archetypes, and sacred numbers come together seamlessly in stories. But where do the three levels of mind or existence, you know that cause and effect level, that level of spirit or the occult, and that level of interrelatedness come together seamlessly. Ito was a great warrior known for his mastership of the sword. He was a great lord, a great fighter. Very often he was called away to war. But in his home life he was happy. He had a beloved wife who had given him a son who they called Kitagawa. But since Ito was called away very often, the care of Kitagawa was left to the mother and a maid who was called Matsu. Now Matsu in that vernacular language means pine tree and she was just that. She was resilient, strong and steadfast. She took care of Kitagawa very, very well. But in that family was the tradition following the usual ways of worshipping the ancestors. Every day Matsu would take Kitagawa into the room, the shrine room, where the relics of the ancestors were kept. But amongst those relics was a sword. And that sword was famous in Ito's family. It was renowned to have disposed of many enemies over the decades. So every day when Matsu took Kitagawa into the shrine room to go through the daily rituals, Kitagawa would say, take down the sword. And Matsu would take down the sword and unwrap it from its silken shroud. And they would do honor, not only to the relics, but particularly to the sword. And Matsu would say to Kitagawa, Day and night you will remember the sword and do honor to the sword, Kitagawa. And Kitagawa would agree and bow and do the obeisances that were necessary. But it so happened that not so long afterwards, Kitagawa's mother passed away unexpectedly. But Kitagawa was in the care of the maid Matsu and was well cared for. Ito again was very often at war. And it so happened in the way of these things that Ito found himself another wife. And this wife also had a son. Time passed and Ito was killed on the battlefield. 
his body brought back in honour. But the second wife was jealous of Kitikawa. She complained in her thoughts that her son had no rightful place because Kitagawa was now the head of this household. So she plotted and schemed. When Kitagawa was 15 years old, the stepmother turned him out of their residence with nothing, dressed only in straw sandals and a ragged cloak. Kitagawa was bereft. He had nowhere to go. He had nothing. The sword had been left behind in its place. But one day when Kitagawa was sitting by the roadside, who should come up to him but Matsu, his maid, dressed for travelling. And she said, I will go with you wherever you go. Kitagawa said, but what about the sword? I do not have the sword. Matsu thought for a moment and she said, take this gold that I have gathered for you and make your way. I will return and take care of the sword. So Matsu returned to the <coughs> residence and when she was able, she took down the sword from its place and took it out into the garden where she buried it deep. Now, of course, as the days passed, the stepmother noted that the sword was missing and immediately knew that it was Matsu, the maid, who had taken it. So she was captured. She was tortured. But not a word would she speak. So the stepmother threw Matsu in a dark dungeon, saying, I will make her speak. So she deprived Matsu of food and water. And every day she would go to the dungeon and ask, are you ready to tell me where the sword is? But Matsu remained silent. Seven days later, the stepmother was out in the garden in the evening air when suddenly she saw a woman, slight of build, slender, but obviously strong and resilient, coming into the garden. And she saw this woman bend down and with her hands begin to scrape the earth until her fingers became blooded. But out of the earth she took the sword and the stepmother immediately recognized that this was Matsu. 
She tried to pursue her, but Matsu, with the sword, disappeared very rapidly into the distance. The stepmother came back to her residence and, taking her servants, went down to the dungeon where they found the body of Matsu. In asking a physician, the physician said that she had died of starvation some three days before. In the meantime, Kitagawa, in a far distant place, was lying down to sleep, when suddenly he felt the presence of someone near by. It was Matsu, and she said, do you honor the sword day and night, sleeping and waking? And Kitagawa said, yes, I honor the sword day and night, sleeping and waking. And Matsu said, the sword is always with you. Kitagawa reached out his hand and there it was on the hilt of the sword. There was not a sign or trace of Matsu. Sacred symbols, archetypes, and sacred numbers come together seamlessly in stories. Where do the three levels of existence or mind come together seamlessly. Who is Matsu? What does Matsu represent in this story? And what is the meaning and significance for us of the sword? symbols, archetypes, and the numerals of life can come together in stories. Where do the three levels of mind come together seamlessly in us? What is the meaning of Matsu? and the sword.
that's really this world will do its work for us.